could um, let us know who those folks are. Uh, so just go ahead and tell us who you are. So we've got Christine from Invermeer. Go ahead, guys. All right, there's Tiffany, there's Rochelle, Eric, Calgary, Diane. Hey, Diane, oh my gosh, Cherise, awesome. Oh my gosh, it's flying here. Ron, how are you, Ron? <laughs> Jamie Hall from Okotoks. Char oh, Charlotte, my daughter's on here. It's her birthday today. <laughs> oh, happy birthday. She wanted to be in the room with me. I said, no, mommy needs to focus. You can watch downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got awesome. Brad, Colin. Tiffany, Red Deer, awesome. Who else? Nice. So there's lots of people jumping on here. Mitch from Lethbridge. Lethbridge, yeah. Oh, and I think I think my mom's on the call. Mary Ellen from Ontario. Hi, mom. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good when your mom joins. Mary. Brad from Calgary. Marjorie. Yeah. So that's great. Um, so I just want to make sure you guys can see my screen, right? Yeah. So Yes. Good. <laughs> that was a question. Perfect. Okay, guys. Well, let's uh, dive right in. You know, we are so uh, that you're here with us here today for this live webinar. We're really excited about it, and uh, I think it's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be well worth uh, everybody's time and effort to be here. Uh, as we all know, COVID nineteen has had a major impact on so many people in so many ways and i'm just going to go back to my screen share now and uh you know covid 19 is something that has impacted people on so many levels and uh i'll tell you i think uh today uh is is definitely a day that has is impacted us and so what we want to try to do is spend a bit of time talking about that you know covid 19 i think has had uh, what i'm going to say is five major impacts so far and uh, so nice to see everybody it's had a people impact I think we've all felt that it's had a health impact it's had a social impact it's had an economic impact and it's had a business impact so you know maybe uh, Cynthia tell us a little bit about how COVID-19 has impacted you uh, you know uh, just a little bit in terms of uh, how it's gone so far for sure, for sure. thanks Abe for having me on um, yeah, perfect. I'm like, I'm gonna mute a little bit of feedback here. However, uh, yeah, it's been quite a ride so far. And uh, with the businesses that I run, it's really about my feet hitting the ground, just running to make sure that everybody's supported from uh, the employees, the staff, the contractors of the music school, the students, the parents. And then, um, yeah, realizing that uh, after all that, of just go, go, go. It's take a look at my own life here at home and how to support my family as well by taking care of me. And that's great. And how about you, Stephen? How's it going? And I'll give a formal intro to you guys in a little bit. Um, but how's, uh, how's it been going for you so far, this COVID-19? Well, I mean, kind of in the same boat as you guys is the top priority is definitely clients right now and making sure that they feel supported and that we're there for them. Um, in any way possible because obviously with isolation with me and my business I'm usually isolated anyways I do most of my stuff digitally anyways but having the gyms closed down I'm a pretty active guy like I like to go to the gym and get in shape sometimes so as soon as that closed I saw for myself I needed to create habits at home to keep going keep my brain going and keep me motivated in those tough times so it's coming up with instead of being be resourceful. Like, what can I do? I need to work out a chest. What should I do? I should do push-ups. Um, if it's with our business, we got to look at different ways of communicating with our clients or prospects or leads or investors or strategic partners. Like right now is a perfect time. Everybody's on the internet right now. Yeah, I, I would agree. So, so we, what we want to spend some time doing here today, folks, and we're only going to, we're going to be about an hour. Um, and the idea is to share some, some ideas for business resilience. Um, but I think before we do that, um, you know, uh, let's have a, a little bit of a look at the lighter side, if you're okay with that. And, uh, you know, you can see on my screen, I think, I hope a couple of, um, you know, how can I describe it? Some memes. I love that uh, first one, you know, throwback Thursday, back in the time when the, uh, you know, the, the uh, toilet paper roll uh, section in your local grocery store was full. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I love day one without casinos, check three, 
uh, raise uh, three rolls and a, and a hand sanitizer, right? And uh, it kind of shows you what's happening out there today. Uh, you know, one of the things about COVID-19 is I, I don't think anybody asked the dogs, you know, if they wanted all their owners home all the time. Uh, and so I love that one on the left. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think uh, that little guy uh, there with uh, some of the chunky rolls happening, that could be some folks I've seen their posts online where uh, they're just eating lots to get through this, you know. And, uh, you know, I love that uh, pro tip. You should wash your hands even when there isn't a global virus panic. And how many of you all agree with that? Just put your hand up if you do, uh, just because I think it's so critical uh, that we, uh, we actually have that kind of a mindset and we have that kind of a mindset where, you know, we're keeping ourselves clean. But I love this here that says, you know, to those who are complaining about the quarantine period and curfew, just remember that your grandparents were called to war. You're being called to sit on the couch and watch next Netflix. You got this. You can do this. Um, and uh, just, just one more, uh, not to make uh, too much light of the situation, but uh, there is the social distancing world chat right there, <laughs> Sasquatch. And, um, and then uh, for those of you who are fans of 80s music, and I'm sure some of you on this call, uh, this webinar are, uh, fans of it, um, you know, here, what, what do we got? I'm no expert on COVID-19, but this is the cure. And, uh, and so I love that because the cure, one of everybody's favorite band. And so, uh, you know, we just kind of wanted to lighten it up a little bit. I mean, there's been so much stress and so much negativity and frankly, a lot of panic and fear. I don't know if I've seen uh, this much fear and panic ever, at least in my lifetime. Uh, and, and so sometimes you just have to remember to laugh a little bit. And uh, I think, uh, you know, obviously um, still be serious about it. And so, you know, like we said, you know, COVID-19 has had five major impacts. I think we could all talk, speak to the people impact um, for sure. Uh, we've, we all know people who've been affected by this either directly or indirectly. Uh, clearly it's had a health impact and we're seeing that and the pressure on our health systems. And, uh, you know, it's had a social impact, right? Where the idea is, uh, you know, around social isolation and social distancing and all of this. And, uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, it's clearly had a, an economic impact. I mean, you know, globally, trillions and trillions of dollars, just profound. And, uh, and then, of course, what that means is a business impact, right? If you can't leave your home, for a lot of people, they have a hard time doing business. And so what we want to talk about here uh, is, you know, how do we roll with those punches, right? I mean, all of this means that we have to change the way we manage our lives and change the way that we manage our career and even our business. So how can we find some business resilience? And let me just say this, that resilience has nothing to do with, with privilege or being born in, in the right place or the right time. You know, resilience is a state of mind. You know, you, you, there's so many things in our lives we cannot control. Now, what resilience is, is the ability to bounce back. It's the ability to find capacity in the midst of hardship, in the midst of difficulty. And so, you know, what we are going to do here today is try to explore some solutions. I mean, here we are. It's COVID-19. None of us has uh, the, the real answers in terms of the big picture. And even our healthcare experts, you know, everyone's scrambling to find a, a vaccination. And that will take time until we find our way through. Uh, but what is the solution? And, and kind of my take on this and almost every other problem that we face as humanity is that the solution, I think, is always conversations, right? Um, you know, the solution is always getting together and having a conversation. Now, obviously, the image on the screen, <laughs> we can't do uh, because of social distancing. But if we can't do that, well, guess what? We can do this. We can get together uh, in a webinar and uh, have some conversations about some solutions, right? And have some conversations about a shared experience and how we can support each other through this difficult time. And so, you know, I've got some, a couple special guests on me, with me on the, on the call today. Uh, the first is Stephen Corcoran, and you can see his picture there. And uh, a little bit about Stephen. Stephen's the author of a book. It's called Sales Secrets, uh, which is geared to help entrepreneurs sell more by being authentic. And I love that. Uh, he's also a speaker talking about things like high performance productivity, psychology of sales, and psychology of marketing. And for about the past four years, uh, Stephen's been traveling around North America, working with small businesses on their marketing and sales strategies. 
And so we're going to be seeing what Stephen will have to share with us here today. And, uh, and then also we have Cynthia, uh, Cynthia Chow Huang, and, uh, Huang, and she is a, a certified life coach uh, with the Certified Coaches Federation. She is also uh, a general manager of the Alberta School of Music and a business owner in the industry of anti-aging. Uh, Cynthia is actually 104, but um, <laughs> just joking. Uh, she, I was going to say she's been so successful at anti-aging that... Uh, I you know all that stuff. <laughs> it's really working in Cynthia's case. Well done, Cynthia. But, um, you know, she, she really, uh, you know, supports community. Uh, you know, I work with Cynthia and uh, Cynthia also works on a number of other projects. And one of the things about Cynthia is her mantra is really, really cool. And that is, uh, you know, people come first, you know, and uh, Christine is uh, saying in the chat window, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right you know if you can be 104 and look like that we'll sign me up too you know but um you know what i thought we would do here today is, is really just have uh you know some conversation and can i just say this um you know in the webinar chat window please be active there we would love to hear uh, not only your comments but also your questions we really want to not just be a bunch of talking heads here today uh, you know, I can tell you without a doubt that we, none of, no one of us has all the answers. I can promise you that no one of us has all the solutions, but with sincerity and authenticity today, uh, we, we thought that we could do something by having a conversation. We could do something by trying to pull on the expertise of each other. We're in a tough situation right now. And so, you know, what I will do is maybe I'll ask Cynthia first to start. You know, Cynthia, why don't you just tell us a little bit about, you know, some of the impact of COVID-19 on the businesses that you're a part of, and perhaps a couple of the thoughts that you've had about managing this. For sure. Thank you, Abe. And you know, really, Christine, I agree with, yeah, Michael as well as that. Yeah, we need to smile and laugh, right? Yeah. And when stuff like this happens and we don't expect it, it's like, how do we laugh through a time like this? Sometimes I get through the roughest patches just by laughing my way through it. And that aside, with the business that I do with the anti-aging, um, I've built myself a platform where uh, it's it self runs, and I work with a great company where um, it hasn't really impacted us much, mainly because we're online and the okay. systems are still running. The foundation has been set successfully. Um, with the music school, that was the business that impacted me the most. Um, it was about a week or so before we found out all the schools here in Calgary, Alberta, um, have have shut down. Uh, that. A week and a half before that, our director of education was in a state of mind. We're like, look, we need to figure something out. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay, right? No, no magic fairy dust is going to change anything. However, you know, let's, let's stay calm, cool, and just figure things out. And, you know, um, the validity, she wanted to see logistics of how we would deal with a situation should things progress in a, in a, in an upscale way with health advisory. So, uh, within a few days of me putting together a document of logistics of how we would run our business of music lessons and classes uh, before all that stuff happened, like, and then Sunday night, it was just me, basically, you know, <laughs> I'm at home, uh, I'm on my computer, and then people are sending me messages, hey, have you seen this, have you seen this, I'm like, okay, like, thank you for being the news for me. And I jumped on and looked and wow, it was like, okay, so what do I do now? Oh, wait, I put together a logis logistics plan. I just put it into action. And I was, I was online, created a mass email list um, and sent it to the email to all the students and parents and really overnight transition in like, I would say a day and a half, transition over 300 students to online lessons. And, it was basically from Sunday night to Wednesday that nothing else was on my radar except supporting our teachers uh, to make sure that they still had a job, support the parents and families through a smooth transition, and then also at the end of the day, making sure that I was mentally sane to even be around my family. Um, and then third of all, with the coaching aspect, I mean, being able to communicate with people over the phone and different platforms and hearing how they're coping with it. it it's great. You know, there are the, you know, the few that are, are struggling. However, majority of people, they're reaching out and being of service to others. 
And I think that's what we need to do through this time is listen to people and they'll tell you what they need from, from you and from me. That's lovely, Cynthia. Thanks for that. And, uh, and so, you know, really appreciate, you know, your sharing on that. So what about you, Stephen? I mean, as you've been out and about and talking to business owners and, and even, you know, thinking about getting your own business going and keeping it going, uh, what, what, have, what have you kind of run into? Yeah, I've been noticing like the biggest thing that's come up for me. And first of all, thanks, Abe, for throwing this. Like, this is amazing. Like, all the stuff and the hard work that goes into it, same with Cynthia on the back end, as well as on the front end, is like, this is so, so cool. Like, is anybody else thinking that? Like, I'm just blessed to be on here and be a part yeah, of this. Me too. Um, one thing that I've noticed that has dramatically went down is my high five count on the streets. Like, every time I go up to somebody and try and give them a high five, they run the other way. <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. I'm just a friendly guy who wants a high five. So, I mean, if you guys are feeling that, let's do like an air high five. Woo. Right on. Um, but let's, let's, I want to give you guys actionable tips and tricks about what you could be doing proactively right now. At least what I'm telling all my uh, clients right now is you need to start building an audience. You got to be that beacon of light for your, your audience, your tribe. They, they're looking for somebody. They're looking for somebody to combine in. They're looking for somebody to be stand up and be like, hey, I might not know it all, but I'll be the leader. Lean on me when you need me. Now, you could be doing this on any of those social media accounts. You could be doing it on LinkedIn. You could be doing it on Facebook. You could be doing it on Instagram. Basically, all over the place. Doing Facebook Live, just letting people know you're there. You've seen it that when you start building this following, because this is eventually going to go down, and people are going to be able to meet with each other. But you need to grow these audience and really start then you start bringing them into your own world. You're building credibility. You're building trust with these people. So then they naturally come back with you. So you need to start working on your, your personal brand as well as your business brand while you have time to do it online as well. Now there's projects that we want to get to. That's a, that's a blessing in disguise, COVID-19, is we have so many projects that we wanted to get to and we're like, man, I should really do that. But it always got pushed back because of operations. But now we get the opportunity to work on Hey, I got that book I wanted, that ebook I want to finish, the recordings, that tr online training videos that I wanted to get out. Now I have the time to actually bring that to fruition, which is a very cool aspect of it. Well, it's been interesting to me because I think what one of the things I said to um, one of the clients I worked with and I'm working with, obviously, is, um, you know, that, that this transition to the online world is something that began you know, let's, let's be honest, you know, 12, 13 years ago, yeah. uh, it began really strongly, I would say, you know, like seven years ago when it was like the writing was on the wall. I think a lot of that was when, when Amazon became as big as they are, um, you know, it's sort of, you know, the light bulb came on to a lot of people that, that oh, wow, I, I can do this. E-commerce works. There are ways that I can make a living with an internet connection and a laptop. And, uh, and yet I think a lot of people defer yeah. that. And it's interesting even watching, you know, churches scrambling, you know, like it's the it's like Armageddon to them. They're like, oh my God, we we aren't gonna have any money if we don't throw something online. And it's amazing how quickly they've been able to pull something together. Uh, you know, even even the Catholic Church, uh, I'll do respect, um, you know, being able to offer mass online. And you think to yourself, well, these were all tools that were available to us, right? Um, and yet the, the challenge for all of us, myself included, is we stick to what we're, we're used to. We stick to what's comfortable. So, so this is a time, you know, with COVID-19 that is kind of crazy uh, because there's so much uncertainty. And, uh, and so how do you, you know, and I'll just throw this out to either of you who wants to take a run at it. Like if I'm a business owner and I'm, I'm trying to figure out, like, how can I generate cash quickly uh, you know, reasonably quickly, what are some thoughts that we can offer them a little bit of help and a little bit of support? What do you think? Yeah, I can, I can chive in on that one. If Cynthia doesn't mind me jumping in. <laughs> Go for it. Um, perfect. So when we're looking at generating money, obviously there's probably a, like a wide variety of businesses here that are on this. It's like I'm talking to like rental depots as well as like people who do like events and stuff like that like hosts like like 
stampede for right now is on, but we don't know if it's going to be on or not. Right. But people are being really resourceful of what they're doing right now. I was just talking to a, a dealership, a car dealership, and they actually put all their cars outdoor outside and started making face masks for the government. So they're making money by using their space, utilizing their space that they have because they're like, nobody's renting cars. Nobody's buying cars right now. Nobody's going out. So how do I be resourceful? How do I get income? So yeah. even reaching out to the government contracts, because sometimes we're not sure that we have certain stuff that people are like, yeah, we can use that space. We can use those, those rental thing, thingamajiggies. Um, but when it comes to the coaching online or coaching space or fitness space, taking everything to a virtual uh, aspect. So using Zoom, using, using Google Hangouts, using all that fun stuff. Build that audience first because if you have no audience, that's where you got to start. You got to add value, keep giving value, keep giving free stuff away. And then you can have an upside be like, I just did this with a, she's a yogi slash uh, karate uh, instructor. So she combined the two, but I told her to build her audience. So she just built her Facebook page, started doing a bunch of Facebook lives. Now I think her page is up to like 500 people on it. Now she's going to be like, hey, for an for a membership fee where we're going to go in deep that we're going to work one-on-one, -on -one, it's going to be $19 per month. And that's how she's generating money is through that. You got to have leads obviously and that go out. So whether that's a free ebook, you got to figure out what does my imaginary friend want? Right on. What is a little tidbit that I can give them that makes them feel good that they build that relationship that then I can promote to them afterwards. Right on. That's great. Thanks for that, Stephen. And how about you? Uh, what do you think, Cynthia? Well, for sure, for me, it's, I mean, for a lot of us, really, it's about putting people first. And when we put people first, everything else pretty much falls in place, right? So, um, for example, with the business and my anti-aging, uh, in the anti-aging industry, it's really taking a look at, it's both service and products. You know, um, I'm not saying it's an easy sell. Basically, what I do, how I've been able to make a little bit of extra income is just finding out what people want, having meaningful conversations that, hey, if you have a fear of going out, you know, I can support you. I can go to the store and buy things for you. Or I also have high quality products that um, you can you can tap into that gets delivered to your door and you don't even have to worry about um, certain things if you have respiratory issues or health issues, right? And how to make a little bit of extra money is just by sharing about the product, not having to have inventory and yet, you know, um, still be able to have that income that comes in for every little bit that you share. So, I mean, like I said, it's not like a one night wonder where you just tap into something and it happens. However, just to fast forward a little bit next week on a call, we're going to have an amazing woman on here and she has already with her stepmom. Uh, took a look at the needs of people and they've already tapped into an opportunity to not only make extra money, it's also by putting people first. Okay, that's great. Thanks for that. Now there's a question and we're starting to see a couple of questions come in on the chat window, which is great. Thanks for that. Uh, you know, hearing from Sandra, she's concerned about the safety of Zoom for therapy or coaching sessions. And what about the legalities of confidentiality? Um, you know, I, I could probably answer that because, um, as you know, I've done lots of both. And, uh, you know, the, the reality of um, the situation we, we live in is that typically, uh, you know, a court will look at the reasonableness of your, your assumptions, right? You know, for, for example, and I'll use a silly example, but if I was to broadcast a Facebook Live with a client session, um, that would be a problem. Uh, it, you know, because the, there's no reasonability to the assumption that uh, we're safe and secure uh, when we're on Facebook. Whereas when you use a platform like Zoom or Skype, um, you know, you can typically reasonably assume that there's a level of security there. But do your research because different platforms have different levels of security. Um, you know, you may also be attached to a regulatory body that has an extra layer of stringency. Um, but, you know, to my knowledge, there haven't been very many actual breaches of confidentiality uh, with a tool like Zoom or Skype. As a matter of fact, I can't think of any. Um, but you know, do your homework. I think the reality is the courts 
uh, you know, have now started to allow medical care, for example, to happen online. And so if you have something like a, a doctor being able to offer medical care, I think that gives a little bit of hope to us as a, um, as a coach or as a counselor. Uh, so here's a, a question from Amy for Stephen. Um, when planning for what your imaginary friend wants, would you focus on a niche audience or try to cover more widespread needs? So awesome. you want to give us that. Yeah, so I usually give this analogy to all my clients, is especially nowadays, a, a human being sees about 2,000 pieces of marketing a day. That's a lot of pieces of marketing. Everybody's trying to grab your attention, but it gets clouded. So if you don't narrow it down, if you can't talk to that one person's problems, frustrations, how to make them laugh, how to make them cry, it's just not going to stand out. The more you know that person, the more you can connect with your client or your imaginary friend, the more they're gonna to want to do business with you because they'll be like, you know what? That person understands me. They understand me from a deeper level. It's kind of like, I always do this analogy. I don't know how much time I got here. Um, so I don't wanna to hog too much, but it's kind of, I do this a doctor analogy. It's like, if you went into the doctors and you sat down with the doctor and you're like, you know what? I've been having uh, trouble sleeping. I don't really know what's going on. And the doctor's like, oh, that's interesting. Did you, do you find you like don't get enough sleep at nighttime around like seven or eight hours? Do you find like that's usually the problem? And they're like, yeah, you know what? I don't do that. And it's like, okay, are you not, are you on electronics like an hour before you go to bed? And like, yeah. And they hit all your pain points. And then when it comes to the time where the person is sitting in the chair and is like, help me doctor, help me, teach me what's going on. And the doctor says, I don't know what's wrong with you. I love that. And they would never say that. They'd be like, because you like, you know, all my pains, you must have the solution for me. Give me whatever you prescribe and I'm going to take it. That's great. Absolutely. Thanks for that. Um, you know, a question uh, or sorry, a comment from Arlene. My, my clients have been messaging and calling me about the immigration process and being able to reassure them that their papers are in process, but can expect delays due to COVID. And uh, yeah, you know, um, Arlene is a is an immigration specialist in uh, in Saskatoon and uh, in in servicing uh, Saskatchewan, and I, I I can totally understand that. I mean, a huge part of the strategy for all of us during this COVID nineteen crisis is is over communication, right? You know, you can't communicate enough, and I think a lot of that is because there's so many things that are, are in flux. Uh, we need to be a voice of calm and a voice of comfort and a voice of reassurance. Um, you know, um, and so Amy is saying, I know Zoom says in their terms of service that a host must have permission from the participants in order to record a session. And that is absolutely true. And that's not just Zoom. Uh, you know, that's actually uh, a legal thing. If I'm in a one on one session with someone and I'm recording it, uh, I need to have their permission. So that's really important. Uh, Saqib is asking, what other economic storms as an entrepreneur have you weathered in the past? Um, well, I mean, I, I, I personally don't want to go into a whole lot of detail on that, but let's just say I've lost everything, um, you know, twice. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and uh, I, I don't think COVID-19 will be as brutal as that, uh, it, to be really honest, but it's going to affect different businesses differently, right? And that's why we need to have a lot of empathy and understanding for each other right now. Um, and then uh, Jamie Hall is uh, letting us know about a website for all business owners, big and small, to apply for federal government contracts. That's awesome. Thanks for that. So, um, you know, there's a link. It's in the chat uh, window. And, uh, you know, we need, to, we need to access these sorts of things because right now uh, all levels of government have supply issues. They need lots of supplies quickly. And uh, you might surprise yourself with what you're able to supply them. So thanks for that. Um, any other questions here? <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the people impact um, for you, uh, Cynthia, uh, when you're working with people and, and you're also a mom and, uh, you know, you also have to manage your husband as well. <laughs> and uh, so tell us a little bit about that, because I think that's really important to folks, right? For sure. And, you know, like just it's so it's not easy to speak to people who are in fear, right? And it's just the other day I was on the phone with someone and I could 
feel the anxiety just ooze through the phone. And I was like, okay, so after they've emptied their cup and, and it was, it kind of went to repetition. I stopped them and I said, Hey, it's okay. Like I'm here. You're not alone. And you know, it's just the fact that people don't, aren't used to working through fear. Usually it's, oh, I'm scared of something, I'm of the unknown, or all the stuff that we're filling our heads with every day that is just being bombarded by all the news. Yeah. It's like, okay, just, just stop and know that everything's going to work out, right? And so with a lot of the people that I've come across, um, like I mentioned, a small percentage are quite, quite fearful. The majority that uh, I'm working with and I've spoken to have just said, hey, you know, it is what it is. I just do my part. I do the physical distancing. I listen to you and Abe and we still stay connected to people we care about, right? And um, from a business perspective, that's the thing that it's so important is to stay in communication. Communication with our teams, communication with everybody we're working with, and to see, hey, yeah, and on one of the Wellness Innovate webinars I was on yesterday, it's okay, productivity stuff still needs to get done at this at the at same time, priority are people. How are people's mindsets, right? And then just helping them work through that with courage, because we all have courage inside of us that sometimes get hidden based on what people tell us. So I would just say to everybody that I'm working with as well, always is, what are you listening to? You know, how often are you watching the news? What are the sources of the information that you're receiving? And, you know, what, what is your morning routine? Right. My, my whole, my whole week was just in shambles when everything went chaotic last week. And on Monday I got back to my morning routine and uh, grounded myself again. So communication is key with, with people that are on your team and that you surround yourself with. That's so good. Thanks, Cynthia. And how about you, Stephen? Any, any sort of thoughts on that? Yeah. Uh, I kind of lost my screen, but that's okay. I'm still there. So kind of how am I uh, coping with it? Yeah. Um, and, and helping others to cope as well, like just on more of the a mental and emotional side. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm part of a couple of different masterminds as well. Okay. And one of the things that they've always kind of leaned on me was for was there's different areas that we're a little bit better that and structured at than other people. So one of the biggest things is having like a daily routine and having rituals, making sure you block out time to find a mentor. Mentors are huge. So I basically laid out exactly what my schedule kind of looks like. Like I wake up in the morning, you've got to make sure you're meditating. You got to make sure that you're reading. You've got to make sure you're taking online courses and you got to be able to communicate with people as well because communication is key especially because humans, we naturally want to talk to people. Yeah. When we're isolated, that's when depression. Also get outside and walk for 30 minutes. Actually walking outside for 30 minutes actually decreases uh, depression by 30%. So just go for a walk, go for a walk. Cause it's so easy to get into our own heads and let that down. One really cool uh, quote that I keep telling everybody that I hear is by Napoleon Hill. That's every adversity, every failure, every headache and struggle seeds an equal opportunity or a greater benefit yeah so it's switching our psychology of how we're approaching this is the biggest thing and if somebody's down they reach out to me i jump on a call i'm like hey bro like or hey what's going on like and make sure that they're they're okay like sometimes they don't even need to talk about business sometimes it's like man i just wish i had a beer so yeah. let's have a beer let's have a beer over zoom let's have tea over zoom and Absolutely. it's just being there for them Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. But no high fives, right? <laughs> I'm missing my high five. I mean, it's not a virtual one. I posted it on Facebook and it went a little crazy there. Yeah. A lot of love, which, I have, which is good for this time. That's really good. Well, you know, what I love to do is just share a couple of thoughts with you as we, as we bring, um, you know, this uh, little webinar to a conclusion. And, uh, and thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you so much, uh, Cynthia, so much wisdom, and uh, Thank you. we're going to keep you on there. And I just want to say a couple of things, you know, because we're going to be doing this every week until, um, you know, until this crisis ends. And uh, 
you know, we don't know what that means. We don't know how that's going to look. But every week on Thursdays at 1145 Mountain Standard Time, uh, we're not going to, um, uh, you know, kind of put a time limit on it. But we're hoping that we're in the one hour range or less because we understand how valuable your time is. And uh, thanks for sharing that, Pamela. It is, it is true. Uh, Pamela is an HR consultant and grief is off the charts. Absolutely. I mean, you know, here in Calgary, where, where, where I'm located anyways, the, you know, WestJet, you know, almost 7,000 layoffs the other day. I mean, that's just, you know, you can't even wrap your head around the impact of that. Um, you know, the, the loss, the dislocation, the, the change, the transition. So, you know, again, we're not trying to set ourselves up as the people with the answers. What we're trying to say is let's have a conversation. Let's support each other. Let's try to find some sort of meaning and uh, path forward in the middle of, of all of this. And so I want to share a couple of things with you uh, just for a couple of moments um, here, and then we'll bring it to a conclusion. You know, when I'm thinking about business resilience, because that's really what we're talking about. The first thing, and I know that, that you know, I thought I'd share the hardest one first, uh, is that we have to get shifted. And when I talk about getting shifted, what I'm really talking about is, is the mindset that the change that we're in with COVID-19 is not something that's going to just go back to normal in a week like nothing happened. I think most of us, uh, especially the experts, and, and I'm not one of them, uh, but a lot of experts are saying that this is going to fundamentally shift the way we live our lives for a whole bunch of reasons. And, and I think a lot of that will probably be good. But, you know, the first step towards change is always awareness. You have to become aware that the change is happening around you. The second step, and I think this is where we're coming to as a society, is acceptance. And acceptance is, is, is emotional, isn't it, right? You, know, you can be aware of a change uh, and you can be resistant to change, but when you start to accept it, you start to say, okay, all right, this is now the way the world is. I've got to find a way to run my business this way. And a lot of business owners are having to do that right now. And, uh, and then I think the third thing is now, is now how do we adapt, right? How do we adapt to the new ecosystem? How do we adapt to the new business environment? How do we adapt? So the first thing in terms of business resilience for me is you've got to get shifted. The second thing that you've got to do, and this is really important, and I'd love to spend a couple of moments on this, is that you've got to get story. And when we talk about getting story, what am I talking about? Well, I want to make a statement here, and it's a strong one. But I hope you, you're taking some notes or you're, you got your phone out and you can take a, a capture of some of these images because resources in a moment like this is not nearly as important as resourcefulness, right? And, and resourcefulness is about a mindset, right? I mean, we are in probably the greatest crisis in our lifetime. And I don't know about you, but I, I've got some resources, but I don't feel like I have all the resources that I need to get through this. But what I'm confident in is internally the resourcefulness that I need to get through this. And so many times they, there's this understanding that our determining factor is not about resources, but it's about resourcefulness. Now, you might be sitting here and you might say, well, Abe, you don't know what I'm going through. And you're right. I don't. The last thing I could ever do is get on a webinar and tell you that I know about your life or your situation or your business because I don't. I admit that. But here's what I want to say, and, 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 and let this get into your heart. You don't get to choose the situation in life. You don't. I don't. But you do get to choose the story. Okay, and I'm going to say that again. You don't get to choose the situation. We're in a situation, most of us would say, and I'll just use the word, it's a shitty situation. I don't know any of us who would have chosen this situation. Uh, and, and yet, I don't get to choose it, but I do get to choose the story. What's the story that I'm telling myself in the middle of this? Am I, am I telling myself a story that's going to lead me to a place where I'm defeated and I'm discouraged and I'm depressed and I'm anxious and I'm fearful because I, I can't turn CNN off? Or am I going to tell myself another story? And I believe this. I've said it so many times that your success or failure, folks, it is always in your story. What matters most is how you see yourself. I'll tell you what, I'm going to throw a a slide on the screen. I apologize. There's so much text there. I looked at it about 10 times. I thought, what could I cut out? And there wasn't anything that wasn't too valuable for me to cut out. So take a picture of this, but let me read it to you. It says this, the difference between discouragement and disappointment is subtle. It's just really tiny. 
Disappointment happens to all of us, right? Put your hand up if you know what I'm talking about, right? Give me a little hand wave. You know, lots of hands going up here, right? So, so disappointment, that's a part of the package. Guess what? It is what it is. But discouragement is a choice we make. Now, I know that's a hard thing to say, but, but it is. It's a, it's a choice that we make in reaction to the disappointment that we face. And discouragement eats away at our soul, right? Discouragement removes your capacity to be resilient. Why? Because there's nothing left in you to keep on keeping on. And so my advice is to navigate disappointments with a choice other than discouragement, okay? I mean, even anger is better than discouragement, right? Even frustration is better than discouragement, right? Like, use it as fuel, but don't let yourself get discouraged because when you get discouraged, you're going to lose your heart. So yeah, please go ahead, folks. You can share all of this with your clients. I hope you will so, so that we can get through this together because that's how we're going to get through this. So number one, you got to get shifted. Number two, you got to get story. Number three, you got to get strategy. So it's now time uh, to kind of not feel sorry for ourselves, but to actually look at our business strategy. What do we need to do to get through this thing? The same way Cynthia had to do with all those music teachers who are depending on somebody like her to find a solution. You know, I mean, she could have sat there and said, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, and our whole life has been turned upside down. But she decided that she would figure out a strategy to get through this. And, and, and if, if you, uh, you know, want some advice, please take a picture of this. This is so powerful. All business strategy. I don't care what kind of business you're in, online, offline, you name it, revolves around defining the problem you want to solve, who do you want to solve it for, and how you can solve it effectively and cheaply. It's just that simple. So you got to start thinking about that. And, uh, you know, every week we're going to have different guests next week. We're going to have a, an expert in offline business, runs a restaurant. I'll tell you about him in a minute. And an expert in online business. She runs a multi-million dollar Amazon business. And so we're going to talk about how we can navigate. But you've got to start to be strategic. What is the problem I need to solve? Who do I need to solve it for? And how can I do that cheaply? So number one, you got to get shifted. Number two, you got to get story. Number three, you got to get strategy. Can I say this? Number four, get social. Okay. Social, I, uh, you know, uh, distancing is the dumbest term I've ever heard in my life. All due respect to all the gods of public health care out there. Uh, you know what? Uh, you know, social distancing is the worst term ever. And maybe I say that because I spent over a decade working uh, with people in the most complex mental health challenges you can imagine. And if anyone on this call has ever worked with people who have wrestled with mental health, you know as well as I do that the very first thing that happens when people have mental health issues is they isolate. And so physical distancing is okay, but social distancing is probably the worst thing that you can do. But beyond that, let me just say this, folks. Social media is going to be your key to getting through this, not just emotionally, but also from the perspective of the business model that you have. When I look at all of these platforms, I know some of you look at them and you're like, oh, I like Facebook, but I don't like LinkedIn. You know, I like LinkedIn, but I don't like YouTube. Listen to me. All of those are simply platforms that you can monetize. I tell people that I use social media, but I don't consume it. You know, so, so I'm gonna say that again. I use it, but I don't consume it. If you ever see me on social media, you'll notice I'm very strategic. I'm not just sitting there liking and listening to everybody's negativity and toxicity and fear. I am a person who uses social media because it is a tool for business, but one of the worst things you can do is consume social media. And some of us need to start looking at those social media platforms and thinking, how can I yield them for my business, right? How can I tell a story? How can I, like Steven said, build an audience? How can I be a different voice in the midst of a lot of fear and in the midst of a lot of negativity? So that's number four, get social. Number five, how many of you agree with this? Get some self-care going, right? How many think that is about business resilience? Self-care. Self-care is so important. And, uh, you know, can I just ask you a question? Really important question, folks. How's your self-care? How's your self-care doing in this crisis? You know, um, you know, some of us are parents, uh, some of us are moms, some of us are business owners, some of us have a lot of people depending on us. You know, and um, 
and 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 you know our instinct is so often to care for everybody else and um you know never would i tell you not to do that but would you please take care of yourself first right i love what stephen was saying and cynthia about routines you know the the, the reason you got to understand there's neuroscience behind this this isn't just oh it's a cool word your brain your neural pathways for them to function correctly they need routines and COVID-19 has disrupted so many of our routines, right? Some of us were used to getting into our car, going to work, going to Tim Hortons, sitting down in a Starbucks. All of those are good routines that have been thrown out of whack. So what do you need to do? You have got to lean into the routines that you still can do and restore to your brain a sense of safety and a sense of normalcy. Because when you have safety, up here, I'll tell you what, you're gonna crush it, all right? <laughs> because it's not about what's going on out there. If you have got your story and your self-care going, you're gonna be just fine. But, but if you don't have your self-care, you can't handle it on your own. You're amazing, but you can't do it all on your own. So that's number five. Number six is get support. How many think we need to get support at this time? Support is so important. You know, when we talk about support, you know, and this is why I'm so strong on this social distancing thing. You know, you know here's, here's the science. Did you know that social support enhances productivity? In other words, we get more done. It enhances psychological well-being. In other words, you feel complete and it enhances your physical health. So again, be physically distant if you, if you feel you need to. But, but don't be socially distant, you know, and, 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 and make sure that you get connected. You know, what about reaching out to people? You know, it's not just waiting for someone to reach out to you, <laughs> you know, but, but actually reaching out to someone else, maybe uh, some elderly shut-in person that you might know, and, and just, you know, trying to maybe be an angel of mercy. I'll tell you what, at one time I was depressed, and I was really depressed, you know, I was, I was at the end of my rope, probably because I... I did, um, you know, I, I made some bad choices and I thought, how am I going to get out of this depression? <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, it was around that time that Justin Trudeau legalized marijuana. And so I thought, well, hey, I just smoke a joint, you know, and, um, you know, no judgment, but that's not my bag. Uh, because the other thought that came to my mind was there's surely someone out there who's more depressed than me. And I found that person didn't take me long, by the way. And I started to put some life into them. And it's amazing what that did. And, and I love what uh, Amy is saying in the chat box, you know, that uh, people are up to 31% smarter when they're in a positive frame of mind. And how many of you would agree with that, right? I mean, when I'm in a positive frame of mind, I even feel smarter. <laughs> no, I, and, and if you get around me, you know, I need all the help I can get when it comes to raw intelligence. And so I'll be in a positive frame of mind all the time just because of that. So that's number six. Let me just go ahead and share it one more with you folks and then we'll bring this in for a conclusion. <laughs> number seven is get steady. Okay, get steady. Can I say this? Within crisis, there are always seeds of opportunity. Okay, so, so I'm gonna just say that again. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. Uh, within crisis, there are always seeds of opportunity. And uh, I was blown away the other day when somebody gave me a call who I had been talking to for several months, a, a potential client, and, uh, and, and in the middle of COVID-19 and an economic shutdown that has cost all of us trillions of dollars um, in, in, in all kinds of ways, this lady phones me up and she says, I'm ready for you to coach me now. <laughs> you know, this is an immigrant woman. Who, who doesn't have a lot of the advantages of those of us who were born in a wealthy country like this. And, and yet she saw this crisis as a moment of opportunity, right? Not to hide and, and shut the doors and, and beg for mercy and hope for the best. But hey, if I'm going to be at home anyways, <laughs> if I'm going to be, you know, uh, behind closed doors anyways, why not tap into the power of online education and coaching? to get me to the next level. See, can I say this? Some of us on this call, we, um, we don't have the capacity we, we need right now to get through this, but we can build it. 
does that make sense? We, we, we can learn all of the things online that we need to learn to get through this, but you have to get in the right environment. And so here's what I'm going to say. And sorry for putting my mug on there so large. Uh, you know, that could depress anybody. But, um, you know, it's, it's time to skill up, folks. It's time to get some training, right? How many of you agree with me? It's time to, to take that course. It's time to hire that coach. It's time to drill into as much as you can, understanding these are tough times. So, uh, you know, business resilience, please take a look at this, right? Seven things, really simple things, not complicated. Number one, get shifted. Number two, get some story going in your life. Change that story, right? Number three, get some strategy. Number four, get, get social. And I, I mean social media. Use it to your advantage, right? Number five, get self-care. Number six, get support. Number seven, get studying. And you know, as we bring this to a conclusion, I just want to ask you a quick, quick question. Let me ask you a question. And uh, the question is really simple. If, if, if we could give you, you know, sort of one program, one option, one way of fitting all seven things into one program, how many of you think it would be worth it? I think it would be worth it. I think it would be so worth it. And, uh, and here's my question. Um, you know, would you be open to exploring a program like that? And, uh, and so, you know, there is a program that does exactly that. And there's a question there in the comment box, and we're going to answer it in just a moment. But, you know, it's the Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise Coaching Program, which can do all of these seven things for you. Help you get shifted help you shift your story, help you get some strategy, help you get social, help you do some self-care, help you get some support, help you do some studying so that you can learn the skills that you need to learn and step into that next reality. And so, you know, here's my question for you. Uh, could a program like this change your life? I think it absolutely could. So what are our next steps? Well, next week, here's what we've got. Next week, we've got Two amazing panelists who are going to be joining us. The first is uh, Gil Carlos, and Gil is uh, the owner, uh, the founder of Broken Yoke. How many of y'all have been to Broken Yoke in Calgary? And uh, they are, are one of my favorite places ever, ever. And uh, this guy is just an amazing human being. And so he runs a brick and mortar business with, with staff, humans, depending on him. And, uh, and, and the leadership that he provides. And so we're going to hear from him about how are they navigating through this. You know, what blows me away about Gil, uh, because I also follow him and Broken Yoke on social media, is in the middle of all of this, they're still giving. They're still giving. They're still giving. They're supporting worthy causes, even though, believe me, they're suffering right now as well. And then we're also going to have M Natasha Mensa, and Natasha's on the screen there. Obviously, she's the mom. And, uh, you know, I don't know if we'll get her daughter. Her daughter costs extra <laughs> to appear on the webinar. But Natasha, you know, along with her husband, uh, has built a multi-million dollar business online on Amazon. But here's what you need to know about Natasha. Natasha lost everything um, in her world. Um, and, and, and not physically, but, but, but emotionally, mentally, she lost her husband and he had built this Amazon business. And she, of course, they're married, but he was really the person who ran it. And so if you could imagine, you know, about, about, about one year ago today, uh, losing your husband, they have four children and there's this multi-million dollar business that you have to figure out and learn and understand and still be a mom an active, present, caring, loving mom to four precious, precious children, three boys, one girl. You know, how many of you think we can learn about business resilience from somebody like her? And so she's going to be on the, the panel next week. But the other thing I'd like to encourage you to think about is would you like to book a strategy call with one of us? And uh, we're going to be sending out an email tomorrow, uh, a free strategy call to think about where you are today and where you want to move ahead. And so that email is going to come out tomorrow. And if you'd like to, then you can absolutely do that. So uh, we're going to ask, uh, we're going to take a look at one or two more questions here. Um, a question from Jenny. Do you have any advice for storefront businesses that have to shut down during this time? Uh, Stephen, what do you think? Storefront businesses, bricks and mortar. What do you think? Yeah, it would come down to like what, what's the inventory of what's the business itself. Um, is there other ways that you could be coping with it or even can you give us an idea of what what your business is
Um, I don't know if Jenny's in the chat window or, or is that coming another way, Cynthia? Chat window. Okay, so Jenny's okay. asking for others. Oh, okay. For others. Yeah, Thanks, it Jenny. all depends. Like if they can switch most of their, if they're like a walk through, like a mall and stuff like that, looking at how they can shift everything onto online. If it's more of a, they just have space and they usually rent out stuff just like I was talking about before, is using the government, asking the government, is there any way that they could use their store space as well as another way of using it? Um, Here's a couple of things that I've seen some business owners do. And this is, it is, yeah, it's, it's very situation specific, but stretching, remember our resourcefulness, you know, so Gil, and he'll talk about this next week, but you know, they, they stayed open as long as they could. And, um, and, and, and now they're continuing to open, but they've shifted to a delivery model. And, uh, and that is the only option that's left for them. And uh, I think that that has been, you know, when I talked to him on the phone, he, he literally said, we're, we're not set up this way, but I'm happy to learn because I want to keep my staff going. And so they've had to shift their whole business, you know. Um, I've also talked to salon owners. Um, and I think that sort of one-on-one -on -one service people, these are the ones I think who are really struggling. You know, if, so if you, if you cut hair, if you own a salon, if you're a massage therapist, something like this, I know that some of them are able to continue, but a lot of them aren't. And so this is very difficult for them. Um, and I think this is where we need to advocate government, especially with some of these folks to help. But even in those cases, then how can I take the audience that I have because if I'm a hair salon owner, I've got a, probably an email list. If I'm a massage therapist, I have an email list. And how can I leverage my audience in order to at least keep people engaged through this so that I don't just have a customer depletion? You know, you might have a temporary business disruption, but that's different from a customer depletion, right? And yeah. I think a lot of customers will understand but we have to keep in touch with them as much as we can yeah it's just being proactive at this time because if you just go out of if like a lot of people are just closing down not posting on social or anything like that and they just right now is the best time to be posting using those mar marketing right now is the perfect time because everybody will just see you guys you guys will be known for that another really cool thing is breweries a couple of breweries here in calgary actually switched the hand sanitizer instead so they're selling hand sanitizer because it's in need right now um, just coming up collaborative ways of how we can keep the doors when they're closed like how do we utilize that space how do we you maybe it's a complete pivot some businesses are pivoting completely the other way yeah and it's just what what is the demand right now what is what is what needs to happen yeah and on that note you know part of it too folks is is appreciating that you know i talked to another business owner who who has made the painful decision to walk away. What was interesting for them was that um, the, they said to, that the writing had been on the wall for some time. And so interesting, you know, for some folks, it may just be having the emotional release to let go and to move on and to be open to whatever possibilities the universe God brings to you so that you can continue to move forward resilience is really about adaptation. It's not about trying to keep the same thing going all the time, but often it's about adapting. So maybe uh, Cynthia put this into the chat. How can I reach out to our clients to keep in touch to refrain from client depletion? So what do you think, Cynthia? <laughs> I think that was, was a, I was actually reiterating what you were saying. <laughs> okay. So the question for us to ask that and, and what I've kind of mentioned to Jenny here is that just reach out to us as well. Like we are available to have our brains picked, you know, sometimes when we're in business, whether ourselves or just hearing our friends in a, in a state of panic, not knowing who to talk to, feeling like they're alone, mm. you know, it's reaching out because the more brains, the better, um, for like Steven and I know like he mentioned he's in different groups as well I have mastermind groups where we we meet up once a month and for me we're doing it online tonight and even our kids jump in and we talk about you know what are wins what are some obstacles we have how can we just brainstorm together 
and have all our minds together and create solutions and suggestions for each other. And you'd be so surprised. It's like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Well, because we're in a different frame of mind and we each have value to add to each other. Love it. It's really good. Okay, folks, well, we're going to bring this to a conclusion. Um, you know, again, uh, please do uh, go back to businessresiliencenow.com, register for our webinar for next week. Uh, we'll send out an email tomorrow, uh, either for you to book uh, as well a strategy call. Uh, very, you know, we're not try trying to sell you something. It's a conversation about how you can get through this. And uh, secondly, uh, there'll be an opportunity for you to link uh, into the webinar next week. And next week, as I mentioned, we've got some incredible guests lined up and you're going to learn and, and get a lot from them. And so thank you for joining. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks for, for you too, Cynthia, sharing your wisdom, uh, your insight to both of you. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, let's get through this. Let's support each other. And uh, we'll see you all in the, in the webinar next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Take Thanks, care. everybody. See ya. Thanks, Abe. Thanks, guys.